Today you will have heard from many with concerns about the negative biological effects from subthermal levels of radiation. Today I wish to mention the radiation aspects either missed from the code or handled so poorly it would be an improvement to the code if they were missing. Unfortunately, I have experience with microwave radiation that few have. Exposure to microwave radiation is not a theoretical discussion in the lab for me. It is a personal recollection for me. 40 years ago, I was exposed to a large dose of microwave radiation, enough to cause the left side of my face to heat instantly. Suddenly I or subsequently, I developed an acoustic aroma on the left side. Since the tumor, my life has been drastically altered for the worse. I would very much like to keep the membership to my club and to the current members only. During my attempts to explain BC, I realized there were several important factors about radiation that were not covered in the code, or if they were, they were not covered adequately. Specifically, the effect of near and intermediate field radiation are not covered. Cumulative effects of many point sources is not covered. Modulation in terms of data is not considered, and pulse signal effects are, are limited. Near field radiation. Spectacular peaks of intensity in near field zone explained why the heating, I felt the heating sensation instantly. Typically, far field is around, is assumed to start at twice the diameter or largest size of the antenna squared divided by the wavelength. Typically, far field radiation is assumed to be two meters for cell phones. Both Health Canada and Industry Canada in various publications address their reasons for additional cautions related to the exposure to near and intermediate fields. Industry Canada in safety six, uh, radio frequentization, evaluation template for uncontrolled environment exposure limits. And Health Canada, technical guide for interpretive Compliance assessment for Health Canada's radio frequency exposure guidelines discuss the complexity of intensity patterns close to the radiating antenna, where the exposure can include many factors such as ground wave reflection, stored energy discharges, etc. Health Canada says near field rate near field zone does not have a substantially plain wave character. But, a very, but varies considerably from point to point. And far field, they mention that have consistent characters. Now, safety code six seems to be aimed more at the far field and doesn't discuss anything within the, the near field zone. The definitions of these fields and the significance of the fields should be in the code as factors such as stored energy, can account for a spectacular 100 times the typically assumed power density. I.e., depending on the frequency, the current code is often cited as allowing 10 watts per square meter. With the effects of close field radiation or and combined other effects, a person could be subject to 2,000 watts per square meter or, and still be in technical compliance with code. Even making the code as protective as many think it is now would set a limit of 0 0.005 watts per square meter or 5 microwatts per square centimeter. And 5 microwatts per square meter is still significantly more than many of the scientific papers, some of which have been referred here today, feel is the appropriate lower limit of allowable radiation. In the past, few were exposed to near an intermediate field or call it close field radiation. Now with the proliferation of personal communication devices, one can be within several close field exposures at the same time. The current code does not reflect the effects of the exposure of the close field zones yet. Both Industry Canada do and express cautions in other discussions. The same caution should be incorporated into safety code six. Cumulative effects. 
Very little consideration in any Health Canada document is given to the cumulative effects of being surrounded by many point sources of radiation. Traveling in a crowded mobile Faraday cage, also referred to as a bus or other public transportation, can be sheer hell for people that experience headaches caused by electromagnetic radiation. Industry Canada states, in the near field or in a complex radio environment where several antenna towers are installed in the vicinity of a location of interest, a detailed analysis technique may be needed using sound engineering practices that take into consideration the contribution of each antenna present. That certainly isn't done in the code. The code, current code does not affect at the number of adjacent wireless devices and the cumulative effect on a human as a concern. Modulation. The effects of data carrying or modulation are not mentioned. Where we're concerned. I did have it. Papers such as Dr. Carl Blackman's paper, Cell Phone Radiation Evidence for ELF and RF Studies, supporting that more inclusive risk and identification and assessment discuss the effects of some forms of modulation. Among other observations of Dr. Blackman was the combination of frequency and modulation can have different effects on a subject varying with the physiological state of the subject. There are many different forms of modulation, and countless combinations of modulation. And frequency, or as Dr. Blackman refers to them, frequency windows. Only radiation limits based on precautionary principles can offer an assurance of protection from exposure to harmful frequency windows. Radiation. Strictly speaking, pulsed is a form of modulation. The current code averages out the intensity of pulsed radiation radiation. This practice is analogous to averaging the effects of spraying with a machine gun bullets and saying if the effect is averaged over a longer period of time, the bullets will not harm you. As with bullets fired from a gun, the only force worthy of consideration is the peak intensity at the time of the microburst or gunshot. Acceptable limits. Today, you will have heard from many expressing the need for the code to be based on precautionary limits, many orders of magnitude lower than today's code. The only way to protect the health of the public from the potential spikes of close field radiation, dangerous frequency windows and errant pulses, etc., is to have the maximum of limits an order of magnitude, orders of magnitude below the ALO. Could, could you come to a conclusion, Mr. Ryder, please? Uh, in a deep and personal way, I'm reminded every day that the radiation can be harmful. How many more peer-reviewed papers showing biological harm at subthermal levels are required before it is recognized as a universal truth that subthermal levels of radiation can cause biological harm? Thank you. Thank you very much. Any comments? Okay, thank you, Mr. Ryder. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you.